afternoon everyone and today we are going to be making Swedish meatballs uh, we're going to be using the Gardein meatballs already pre-made of course from the freezer section you get these if you can and it's just a shortcut didn't feel like making meatballs from scratch so you're going to Take a couple couple tablespoons of vegetable oil or canola oil, about three tablespoons, and you're going to preheat it in your oh in your pan, and then you know once it gets popping like that, it's ready to go. So we just want to put these meatballs in and brown them up a little bit. Uh, the most work we're really going to be doing is just making the gravy. So this is two packages of the Gardein Meatless Meatballs. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to need all these meatballs, but if it's good, then I'll make more gravy to go with it another day let's cut that down some make sure your fire isn't too high put it on like medium to medium low um, I'm making this in a Dutch oven so this is not completely non-stick I don't think so Just give them a little space or try. Goodness, they're sticky. So we're just gonna cook those for a little bit. Um, one thing I unthawed these meatballs before cooking them, so. You may have to unthaw your meatballs or not unthaw your meatballs, but I unthaw mine. So yeah. And then you're like, oh, we're gonna sit here and just watch these meatballs cook. So let's talk about Swedish meatballs. Yeah, they're sticking a little bit. Yeah, so I like history and I like food. So, Swedish meatballs are actually not Swedish. They are, they originated in Turkey. And during the 1700s when King Charles XII lost the war against Russia, he was exiled to the Ottoman Empire. So, he was there for about a good five years. And when he went back to Sweden, he decided to bring back the Swedish, or which is now known as the Swedish meatball recipe. He took that back. He took coffee and stuffed cabbages, which these originated in Istanbul. Just a quick little tidbit. If you care to know. So you know, just get them a little brown. So once the meatballs have all brown, you got them brown like you like, you can start removing them. You don't have to cut the fire off. Just leave the fire on medium to medium low or if you have if your know, stove has numbers on there uh, four or three <laughs> would be the uh, ideal um, temperature number whatever you want to call it 
Okay, the meatballs have all been removed and now we have the bits in there. And I'm leaving the oil in there. We're gonna deglaze this pan. This is three cups of vegetable broth. I use um, Better Than Bouillon base. The um, chickenless Better Than Bouillon. And I took three teaspoons of that and mixed it with three, and mixed it with three cups of water. Or you could use vegetable broth if you have it, but. So now, I'm gonna add one can of coconut milk, full fat. At this point in time, you can cut your heat up some because you wanna get this to come to a simmer. So I'm gonna put that on five. And I'm just going to start this. So next we have one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of allspice. I'm going to put that in there. Here we have two tablespoons of vegan Worcestershire sauce and one tablespoon of Bragg's liquid aminos. And that's gonna go in there. If you don't have Bragg's liquid aminos, you don't have to use it. You can use uh, salt, salt it to your liking. However, I use Bragg's. Now we have two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Let's get all that in there because, you know, things are a little scarce right now. Let's get all of that in there. Get it all in. Waste not, want not, right? And I'm just going to whisk, whisk that all in together. So now what you want to do to thicken up the sauce is you want to take one fourth cups of all purpose flour and you want to add six tablespoons of water to that flour and you want to whisk it until you get get it to this consistency like you know a fine little slurry going on here and the reason you want to do that is because if you just put plain old flour into this mixture you're going to get a bunch of lumps and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and smooth. So what you wanna do is start whisking this in. And this is gonna thicken up your sauce. And if you want your sauce more thick, you can just Add a little bit more flour and some water to a bowl separately and make the mixture again. Whisk, 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 whisk it 
Then after that, you're going to add your meatballs back into the mixture. Being as though these meatballs were already pre-cooked and hot, we don't have to let them heat through or none of that stuff, so just, you know. But I will leave this cooked for a couple minutes. And ladies and gentlemen, here you have it. I meant there you have it. Vegan Swedish meatballs. I'm gonna be pairing this up with pasta so you will see the I guess you'll see the picture <laughs> and I'm gonna post the recipe but don't follow the ratios I said in the video because I changed a couple things the final measurements will be in the recipe that I post most of the measurements are the same, but I've just changed a few little things. But at least you know you have the instructions on how to make this. I hope this was an okay video. Hopefully I'll get better at it. And of course, if you have any questions, you can comment down below or you can DM me, however you wanna do it. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and if you make this recipe, uh, feel free to take a picture of it and post it in the group so everyone can see or just comment and said you made it. But I would love to see you post pictures. I love seeing that. So, you guys enjoy your day, and I will be enjoying these Swedish meatballs for dinner. <laughs>